Welcome to the AHA Vic CEO's update. In recent times, you've had a few uh, changes at the Victorian uh, Commission for Liquor and Gambling Regulation, and uh, most importantly, we've had a new Chief Commissioner appointed. I've had the opportunity to meet with uh, Mr. Bruce Cohen, the new uh, Commissioner, and uh, I must say I was impressed by his keenness to understand uh, what were the issues in the industry, how was business going, and uh, what role uh, can the uh, Commission play in, as well as regulating, how can it assist in advancing uh, the uh, success within the industry. So a most uh, welcome uh, attitude by the new uh, Commissioner and we look forward to working closely together. The Minister has uh, given uh, Mr Cohen clear direction that he's got to review some of the activities of the Commission particularly in regard to its risk-based strategy to make sure that that's operating efficiently and effectively. One of the immediate uh, responses, uh, and I think it's already on the ground, we'll see an increase in the number of liquor and gaming inspections being carried out by the Commission. Uh, the, pre, uh, the current government, when they were in opposition, were critical of the declining number of uh, in venue inspections and uh, already we're seeing a significant increase in the conduct of them. So everybody be aware that that's a priority issue for the Commission. Have your black boxes with all the uh, plans, details of directors, etc., your RSA details readily available for inspections. In our discussions with the Andrew Government over the six months that they've been um, in charge, we've been really putting before them the need for them to initiate a program to facilitate responsible innovation and growth within Victoria's hospitality industry. Things are pretty tough in terms of the operation of the hospitality industry and it does require some clear leadership by the government to encourage and facilitate uh, responsible innovation and growth. And uh, the initiatives there can be from the relatively small right through to uh, significant uh, decisions of the government. So that's the framework where we're actively pursuing with the government to try and get them looking at, from a positive perspective at the growth and innovation within the industry. And I suppose one of the early outcomes of that was the recent announcement by uh, Minister Jane Garrett of the intention whilst continuing with the freeze on post 1am licences in CBD Melbourne and the inner metropolitan council areas, but actually to significantly increase the uh, flexibility available to uh, the Commission to grant exemptions. And uh, we believe that, that uh, that's a positive step forward because there's a number of venues, particularly hotel-based venues, which uh, really represent minimal uh, risk and uh, minimal harms uh, uh, emanating from their activities where in fact an exemption from the 1am freeze would be desirable. So that's certainly an early indication that the government's looking uh, proactively at uh, facilitating uh, uh, growth and expansion with the industry. I think another example is the facilitation of live music in, uh, in late night venues. We've certainly been having discussions with the government about uh, any intentions they've got with regard to extending smoking restrictions in drink dining areas. My recent discussions with the, both the Premier and the Minister for Health clearly indicate that the government has got a program to progressively roll out further restrictions on smoking. Now as far as restrictions in drink dining areas, the government hasn't got any immediate plans in that regard, but uh, I think there's an inevitability that at some point in time uh, the government will be turning their mind to it and we've certainly stressed the need for an extensive consultation period to ensure that the community and publicans are ready to take this issue forward successfully and we're satisfied that uh, that period of consultation uh, will be made available in due course. A hot issue at the moment, uh, particularly for Victoria's 430 or so pub tab operators is uh, the current uh, lack of vision uh, for Victorian thoroughbreds as uh, Racing Victoria, Seven West through Channel 7 and uh, Tab Corps uh, get their act together in terms of reaching an accommodation with regard to the availability of Victorian thoroughbred vision on Sky Racing. The priorities from AHA Victoria's point of view is to do all we can to protect and advance the in-premises retail wagering system. That's a priority and of course that's essentially the pub tab business. 
as far as uh, vision goes, uh, if we go back a number of years, there was virtually uh, exclusivity in terms of the availability of uh, event vision in pub tabs. Over the years, that's been significantly eroded, and really now that it's going to be available free to wear on uh, on seven eight, one's really got to question the extent to which there is any value uh, that RVL Racing Victoria Limited can assign to that vision which in due course uh, is required to be paid by the pub tabs. So we're strongly arguing that there should be a significant reduction, if not the complete elimination of costs associated uh, with Victorian thoroughbred uh, vision available ultimately through, uh, through Sky Racing. And of course in this interim period where there's no vision, we're in detailed uh, negotiations uh, with TAPCOR in terms of rebates that would be available uh, to uh, compensate for that lack of vision. Certainly members uh, will be aware uh, through a lot of press recently that uh, the accommodation uh, division of AHA, that is uh, Tourism Accommodation Australia, TAA, at a national level, Martin Ferguson, ex-minister for tourism and certainly well-known Australian politician, has accepted the position as chair of that organisation, which is a division of the AHA, as well as leading, um, as, a, as an ex-minister for tourism, as well as leading uh, uh, tourism Accommodation Australia, Martin, through his experience in the industrial relations area, will certainly uh, be able to assist us in getting some rational discussion underway in terms of penalty rates. And I think Martin's already been out in the uh, in the public arena on that. So a lot happening. I've, to a certain extent, I've scratched the surface there. A lot happening, but uh, I've, uh, I look forward to. Uh, to continuing to be uh, raising those issues at council meeting, divisional meetings, and as all AHA staff get around Victoria. So it's been a pleasure to update you on developments. Look forward to seeing you soon. Cheers.